This is Alex again with a non-picking video. Bought this lock, this multi-lock. Don't know what model exactly off of eBay. There's the shell. A while back, a long time ago, I was a really unaccomplished picker. And uh, pardon this, I'm doing this completely freehand. And I've been unable to pick it. And um, so last night I was working on it and just trying to pick it and I thought to myself what would Bill do? What would what would Bo Bosnian Bill do? And I think what he would do after you know really trying everything he could is he'd probably want to take it apart and figure out what was going on. So what I did was I tried shimming it and we saw I had another video on shimming but there's the shim that finally worked and you'll notice I cut a sort of U or V shaped if I can get him to, oh there we go thing on the end there that ended up working and these multi-locks what you have are pin in pin type system right so as I'm coming in with the shim focus will stay where it's at I'm shimming first this larger pin come on focus there we go and then shimming the inner pin and I found that it just worked better if I had this little V notch in there that seemed to grab it better and be less likely to dislodge and I would get the first three pins so you're, you're shimming from the back from the rear of the lock and I got this one get this one this was pretty tough um, you can see here just for information um, this pin here is sort of basically regular top pin let's see if we can get to macro that's pretty good that's a regular pin that's a mushroom that's basically a regular pin that's a, a mushroom or a, a hybrid spool of some kind and then that's a regular pin this mushroom here on four, number four um, second from the back happens to be on a very long key pin and a very long center pin and unlike all the other key pins and I don't know if you can there actually is a very small ridge in there I don't know if that's just from wear or if that's a meant to be like a light serration or something anyhow very hard to shim I got through the first three pins this one this one this one and I got to pin number two and I would get stuck and I said well you know I've reduced it to a to basically a two pin or four pin lock I should be able to pick it didn't couldn't pick it and I finally after many more hours of shimming and fiddling with different shims I finally got the bloody thing open and here's what I found the first thing I found was I was staring into the plug and let me reassemble the pin the way I found it and you will immediately understand what I'm talking about. I've got the plug out and I'm feeling very happy because I finally got the stupid lock open and I'm staring down into the plug and this is what I see. Okay, This is what I see there. Now, maybe kind of subtle, but if you look at the top of the center pin, you'll notice that it's not flat. It should be flat. The reason it's flat is that it has a little um, a little flat area that's a little bit wider than the pin and it keeps the pin from falling all the way through. Keeps it sort of captive inside the bottom pin. And when I pulled this thing out, I can get it into focus. There we go. And in high def you should be able to see that. You can see that the pin is actually upside down in the though the center pin is upside down in here. And then let me show you what I'm talking about if I can do this without dropping it on the floor. Um, focal length, there we go. Okay. 
that's what this that's what this bottom pin looks like. You can see that end is curved and that end is just flared a little bit. Now interestingly, yeah, you know, it could work, but it doesn't. If you look at this thing when it is seated and fully raised in there, there's still a hole. It doesn't come up to the it doesn't come up to shear line, which means there is no pick and there is no key that could have opened this lock, which might be the reason that the gentleman was selling it on eBay to begin with for a very reasonable price. So I now feel a little less bad about my picking abilities and when I assemble the pin correctly with the with the key pin in there the way it's supposed to be at the right focal length you can see that in fact it is possible to raise the thing to the shear line right, and be able to pick the lock. So I feel a lot less bad about my pecking abilities now. There we go. I found one other weird thing when I was working on this lock. So I was trying to find anything. Maybe there was some bizarro security feature that I didn't know about or you know some Israeli you know secret thing in there that had eluded me and um, what I found was if you look into the plug and this is the if you look into chamber number two that's the front of the lock okay front of the lock back of the lock there's something else weird in here, but I'll show you that in a minute. If you look into chamber two, there, you see this little silver thing. And this little silver thing is a detent. It's a spring-loaded pin, which extends into, uh, no, let's see if I can really mess up the camera. If I turn that light on, come on. You can see him sticking out right there at the bottom. It's not really in focus, but because um, the camera is really confused. But you see that little shadow at the bottom? That's that pin sticking up. So what I suspect is that that's for some kind of active element. Now, I don't know if that's the normal place for like an MT5 Plus or one of those type of locks, but I um, thought that was kind of interesting. Turns out it has nothing to do with the um, there's no locking mechanism in it into that if you look at the plug, which cleverly is right there. Um, focus. Can't focus. Macro. There we go. Um, there's no, there are these side holes, which, purpose for which I have no idea, but um, it's just, you know, standard issue plug. Um, another interesting fact is that the, the warding and there is warding, is right there on the right, right in here, okay, right there. It's pretty much flat across the top except for that goofy pin. But if you turn it this way, if you can see, oh yeah, it looks awesome. It's only on the last two pins, kind of weird, completely, completely normal all the way through, then only on the last two pins. Maybe that made broaching the thing easier. And then you've also got all these little ridges in here, purpose for which I don't really know. Um, and just to finish out and be for completeness, there are anti-drill pins here and here and in the shell um, there are anti-drill pins here and right there. Okay, and I think in the plug there was one other one. Yeah, there's actually pins here and there. Um, I used to further frustrate drilling into that. Interestingly, one of these pins looks like it's made out of brass, but that just could be an optical illusion. At any rate, um, I think I'm going to put this back together now and try to pick it, and if I can pick it reliably, on, I'll try to do it on camera. But I just thought you'd find that interesting. So, caveat emptor when you're buying things on eBay, um, you may get some kind of really messed up lock that you can't pick, and it may actually be because it's broken. Um, and just to give you an idea of the other difficulties you may face on this type of lock. Ah, happy. You got a mushroom shape, you've got a spooled end, and then it's a little hard to see, but the end of the center driver, the driver that runs that middle pin, or the, the inner pin, is also spooled. And every single one of these top pins is like that. Every last one of them. 
and in fact the top of the uh, the top of the little um, center pins themselves is sort of spooled um, with that little detent so it's kind of a pain in the ass even to get them to set you get some very interesting false sets in there so um, and uh, so there you go so multi-lock fail um, but I feel less bad about it because um, you know the lock was basically broken so I'm gonna put it back together try to pick it and see what happens I'll let you know anyway thanks for watching uh, this is Alex um, keep it legal and have fun cheers